What's going on, you tubulous? EXO coming at you here, out in the garage, about to be digging deep. I don't even know what I'm saying right now. About to be digging deep into my girlfriend's sound system. You guys really love that video with the G2's dual ported box, a great little install on YouTube. But today, we're gonna be downgrading, say it ain't so, <laughs> the lithium install that we did, which did great, almost too great. It's only a 3000 watt system, but that battery could handle like 6000 watts. So today, we're gonna be switching over to a nice turbo start special over from Showtime Electronics. Apparently these batteries are top-notch quality, so we'll do a little comparison from what we have now to what we can get with this nice new AGM battery. Let's see how she does. Tuck these amplifier leads away and go ahead and grab our amplifier, good old lightweight lithium. Hopefully my girlfriend doesn't get too upset at me for swapping out batteries on her. But now we've got an empty spot. So let's go ahead and get my girlfriend out here and assume the position, assume the position, assume the perspective of someone who's never done this before. Because us diehard bass heads kind of take it for granted sometimes that installing a second battery may not be second nature to everybody. So let's go ahead and resume the rest of the video like we're explaining this to someone doing it the first time. See if she's in on this. Oh, hey B, you want to help me install your second battery? I'll try. <laughs> yeah, we got pretty much everything in a nice blank space where people would end up starting off themselves. So I figured we could bring you into the situation and help people out who are doing it all by themselves. What do you think? Sure. As you can see, we got a nice blank spot from where Elise's old battery used to be. And we're gonna use that same exact spot for the new battery that's about to go in. Do you have to put it there or could it go somewhere else? Uh, that's a good question. You can install a second battery anywhere that is safe and easy for you to wire it. Our amplifier is located right there, so we chose in front of the box. You can go to the left or the right wheel well, but this will work out just perfectly for us right there. Let's go ahead and crack open this fresh turbo start from Showtime Electronics. Let's see if Elise has the strength here. Oh man, she's packed up tight, but let's see if she's got the muscles. Come on. Oh my God. <laughs> Come on. My lower back, hold on. Harness the inner power. <laughs> I don't think this is happening, babe. Oh, oh, it's not happening. Almost. Flip it down that way and take it out the long way. Ready? Yeah. Ooh, nice. Oh, I like the color. There you go, pull that right out. Got a little oh, upside okay. down action here. Right. Okay. Ooh, that is a nice beefy battery. I, that's that's larger than the one we had in there before, actually. This is a, oh, this is a hefty mama. Look at that. I like the branding and How I like the color. that way? That way is a lot. <laughs> so you didn't actually think I was gonna pick it up? No, I was testing it. Look at this beast, 127 amp hours, 12 volts, very heavy, a lot of reserve capacity. It's probably better off for Elise because she didn't need that initial power, but having more long-term energy will probably benefit her in the long run. Now we'll do a quick little resting voltage test just to see how storage and shipping has fared on the cells. Switch it to DC, of course, and we are getting 12.76, just about perfect. The battery terminals are dang near flush with the actual case, and the case itself is very strong with lots of extra strength added on the sides. Overall, this battery is looking pretty great for a secondary option in our trunk. All right, let's see if Elise can put her in with both hands from the top. Let's go ahead. Come on, use those muscles, Pete. You got this. Right along to the other side of the vehicle. Yep, you got this. Man, it's nice to have my lady do all the work for me. Now what? Put it right in here. Go ahead and take a break and put it right on the seat. Nice. Yeah, we're gonna get you a nice workout today. Think you can squeeze that up into that little uh, spot up there? I'll do my best. There you go. That, that uh, plywood will give you a, some sort of a platform. We might need to okay. improvise. It's going right like It's gonna actually go tilted up because we need, we're gonna do it exactly the way we had it last time. We're gonna put the, we're getting a crazy glare, so I'm gonna take the reins for a little bit here, hold on. All 
All right, got a quick second where the sun's not freaking beating down on us, glaring the camera. I just got done repositioning the battery into its final spot. I wanted it to be like this because it's actually a little bit more space saving. Right here next to the battery is the positive and negative for our amplifier. And right below it is the negative and positive from our alternator. This is what will keep everything nice and charged. Let's go ahead and explain that in a little more detail. When it comes to wiring up the second battery, it really couldn't be any simpler. And maybe that's where some people get tricked up. You know what the most common way people are doing this? No idea. Well, it's the same way that we did it right out of the gate. You can see here, we have one positive run, a nice thick run of wire on the positive. This goes down all the way to the back of the car, fish through paneling and all that. That's gonna be different from case to case. Now the ground, we don't have an individual ground wire because we're utilizing the unibody of this car to do the grounding. Even though it is made of steel and then there's pinch welds along the way, it still has a direct path to communicate with the alternator because the alternator is touching all these metal parts on our engine. So that's how we get full communication from the back battery to the front battery. A lot of people will say that it's best to have an individual wire just like you have on your positive, and that's absolutely true. But within a certain range, it is okay to use the chassis of your vehicle to complete that circuit, especially especially if your alternator is just a single unit under the hood. So essentially it boils down to this rear ground being what connects the front alternator. Pretty cool. Just secure the battery using some brackets and the box itself as a barrier and it is in there real good. She ain't going anywhere. So once I flip up that seat, it's gonna be even more protected, but we got top protection, front to back, and side to side. So what do you say? Let's move on to the positive and negative, which we just explained where it is coming from. This is coming from the front battery, and this is grounded directly to the body itself, which we picked the thickest part of the car, which just so happens to be where the seat belts bolt into the metal. I don't wanna yank this carpet out right now, so if you wanna see Elise's install, make sure you check out the links in the description where we built this from scratch. It was an awesome day, oh yeah. Hand-eye coordination, what? Oh. Let me just there strip these out for you. Take that fuse right out. Nice. Let's group up all of our negatives now that we're ready to almost plug it into the amplifier. Here's one, here's two, and here's three. We're just gonna stack those up and plug it right in because there's barely any light, but you can see me pointing to it. Hey, at least think you can tighten up this terminal for me real quick? I'm sweating like crazy. I gotta love August in North Carolina. Yeah, it's that terminal right down on the bottom right there. You kinda gotta finagle the head and just like insert a tip right there. This one? Yep, we got the fuse pulled so everything's nice and safe even if we connected the positive. And I'm thinking we can relocate our fuse block right next to our battery because our box will give us a place to mount it to. Here we go, a little something like that to get the party started. And look at that, we're ready to plug everything on the top with a nice stack of terminals. We're gonna stack up the amplifier's positive on top of the positive for the alternator. And just like that, we've got our battery all wired up. Positives and negative, what's going on, Elise? What's coming on over here? Get off the Facebook, gonna go show you. Everything's all finished up, man. A nice little replacement with the AGM Turbo Start Special. Nice. Gotta love that. It's simple as pie, guys. It does seem a little bit more complicated than meets the eye, but once you get the gist of it, it goes by real quick and it wires in real easily. So now I'll have Elise do the honors of replacing our fuse into the fuse block. This is what will make it nice and live. So I'll have you take this and go ahead and put it in that same thing that you undid from the beginning. Should kind of just fit right in easily. Uh -huh. Yeah. Nice. And just like that, I think that the battery installation is complete. 
Can you believe it? It's really simple, and once you get in the groove of things, it really goes by pretty quick. So let's go ahead and take one more gander before we get testing this thing. What do you say about going down the road and doing some bassin', huh? Sure. Yeah, what we'll do is, is stick a multimeter on the battery itself, play some down and low dirty bass songs, and see what the voltage does in reaction to the voltage drop. We'll do a comparison from what we had before to what we have now, and see how the turbo start holds its own. Let's get crazy. of current draw and we're rebounding right back up to where the alternator charge point in which is around 13.8 but it'll take a little bit to rebound back to where it should be but damn I don't know whether to be more impressed with the stock alternator or this fresh turbo start battery either way it's a nice good combination right out of the gate <laughs> So before we head out, let's do a quick little comparison with these numbers compared to our last setup. Before today's swap, we had just a single Cyber 6K Lithium. That's a 19 amp hour battery, 13 pounds of total weight, and a cost of $800. The lowest voltage was 12.5 and the highest amperage was 191. And remember, this was just one battery all by itself, no primary battery under the hood. After the turbo start swap, we were able to use two batteries, a Group 35 up front and a group 31 up back. Combined together, that's 167 amp hours of capacity, 120 pounds of total weight, and a cost of $640. The highest amperage was 223, and the lowest voltage was 12.2, which I blame myself for accidentally turning it up a little more, but still very comparable to the lithium at just 19 amp hours. So when it boils down to it, it's all about preference in this case. Both options are great choices and still perform well side by side. And just in case you're looking to check out these products for yourself, be sure to check out the links in the description for Showtime Electronics direct links and every little bit helps support the channel. So there we have it, a fresh turbo start install right here for your viewing enjoyment on YouTube. And special guest Elise, we got her in the hot seat getting her hands dirty so make sure you give her some encouraging comments below because this was a really pleasant treat for me so there we have it guys as always huge thanks to showtime electronics for hooking me up with some awesome goods feels great to have a job that i finally love and i can just keep on trying new stuff so until the next video this is exo signing out with the fresh turbo start install 
I'll see you then. Hold the phone there, everybody. Don't leave just yet. I have got some news for you. You guys remember the Ultra Cat video from a couple few weeks ago where we were going to give away an awesome little unit to one of you guys who were watching the YouTube video? All you had to do was check out the Instagram page of Showtime and just show your support that way. Couldn't be any easier. I personally got the UC31 that you saw in that video, but we got a brand new one about to be given away right here. And I'm about to tell you who it is. Thank you so much for showing your natural support Mr. Nightlife 95. He's got a 94 DeVille with some Rockford subs and amplifiers. I can't wait to see what you got man. I'm gonna follow you on Instagram so I can get some updates of what you end up you know put, putting in store with your, with your setup. I'm really excited that we could be a part of this together. Looks like you got zero gauge all the way to the back doing some good preparation steps. I love it. Hopefully you do too, man. So thanks to everybody. This really hits home with me because I wish I could give every single last one of the people who watch my videos something from the bottom of my heart. So it's like kind of bittersweet, but it, you know, giving back to the community, we, we, you, gotta, we, you gotta do what you can, right? You can't just say never again. So we're gonna continue to do this kind of stuff right here for you guys' uh, enjoyment. So until the next video, this is EXO signing out. I'm gonna be tuning up my amplifiers next. This last show was fantastic, and I got my loudest score ever with almost a tenth of a dB increase at 40 hertz. So until then, stay on the lookout, and congratulations, Nightlife95. Thank you for being here, subscribing, and checking out the Showtime pages. It re I'm choking? What the heck? It really means a lot. So until the next video, this is EXO signing out. Ha <laughs> ha!